Hello, Garstor here again, and I'd like to continue my UV layout series. When we last looked at this model, we focused on unwrapping only the corbels here around each tower, and I showed the copy UVs feature. This time I have uh, completely unwrapped the entire tower, so we're looking at it in 3D view and you can see that it's very nicely flattened out. I've already flattened all the UVs. The only changes I've made is that I originally had some end caps along these bottom polygons and I have deleted them since theoretically this model is going to be sitting on the ground you won't see those end caps so there's no point in keeping them around and having to unwrap them and deal with them. Other than that the model's the same as before and I've just, uh, as I've said, I've completed the unwrap. So let's take a look at the UV view. One other change I did make was to the corbels. In the previous video on the copy UVs feature, we ended up with two shells per corbel, and I've decided to make it all one shell. So this little top piece here and this little bottom piece here uh, were originally separate but I did choose to weld just the middle faces there. And uh, that's kept it the whole thing together very nicely. And then with the copy UV feature and the um, U direction, I've let UV layout unwrap them all. And you can see it extends across three UV tiles here. The main walls of the castle here were pretty simple to unwrap. I initially unwrapped each of the four sides completely and then I chose to weld them together along this edge here to make one shell and that extends over about two full tiles and then lastly the towers these four rectangular pieces are the main tower bodies and then the rest in the middle here is the extruded uh, tower walls where you might have some some soldiers standing and, and firing arrows from or something like that um, I originally cut everything apart separately and then re-welded these back together and again with the goal in mind of having one single UV shell for the tower. And then of course the copy UV feature. Let me quickly unwrap the other three towers. So we're ready to pack our model and that's what this video is going to be about. We want to get all of these shell pieces into a single UV tile. Now you can certainly find ways to do this manually, but it's extremely tedious, probably even more tedious than unwrapping all the shells manually. And of course, UV layout is gonna do that for us. So if we go to the pack menu, you'll find quite a few options here. And there's only gonna be a few that I discuss. We're not gonna look at everything. But the first thing I wanted to show is the show shell bleeds. So that go, coincides with this bleed option here. So if we increase the bleed a little bit and then click on show shell bleeds, you probably noticed it changed a little bit. Let's zoom in on a shell. And so you can see this little buffer zone area that goes around the perimeter of every single UV shell. And it's eight pixels wide. I usually use show shell bleeds and I tend to keep it at about three or four pixels. And that, as I said, it's just a buffer zone. It helps uh, make sure that the shells do not overlap and they give you a little bit of a free reign with when you're painting on in a 2D paint program. The show tile coverage, that's always on by default, but you can see it's actually not enabled. We saw it previously in the other video. We had a little bug where it showed 100%. Must have just been a math calculation error. But if we uncheck that and recheck it, it recalculates. So here's our three tiles, and you know these are about half full, and uh, this is about a fifth full. But as I said, we want to get all of this into one single tile with as optimized as possible. So basically, the way to do that is to click Pack All. But first, the quality. This is basically some of the algorithms that UV layout uses when deciding how to pack. 
And as you might guess, fast is a pretty low quality, but it is very fast. And the best is probably going to optimize your packing a whole lot more efficiently, probably give you better results at the cost of some longer thinking time. And then mid is a nice middle ground. The map res is the resolution of your UV map, the final texture map that you're going to consider. And most maps are either 1K, 2K, or 4K. And lately, some of the newer maps are even going up to 8K. UV layout only shows up to 4K. But that doesn't really matter. This just is another consideration in the calculations. You're not actually locked into using a map of this size. So let's set it to 2K and fast and click the pack all button. And UV layout immediately comes up with this layout here. And it's only covering 26.8%. And that is not ideal. When you create a UV map for, for your future textures, you want to cover as much space as possible. And this is just not efficient enough. So what are we going to do? We're going to have to rethink a few things here. And I previously, before recording, I've uh, come up with a, a much better solution. And it involves actually cutting this once more here. So if we press F to reflatten, so we accept the fact that we've got yet another cut seam. And instead of having one shell for the walls, we've got two shells. And now if we pack all again, we should get some better results. There we go, 58%. And that's pretty good. Um, given the simplicity of this model, um, this is actually very good. We're not going to get much better than this, I think. But just for laughs, let's try best and pack all. Let's see if we get anything else. And you can see it tries several different combinations. And you can press space to stop if you're tired of waiting. And on a really complicated model with a lot of meshes, it could very well take many hours to complete this process. But 60%. So we got a little bit better coverage. Um, and as I said, we're probably not going to get much better than that. One other option, and I've left it off intentionally for this, though, is the rotate. So rotate will allow UV layout to rotate these shells. And by default, it starts with increments of 90 degrees. And of course, as you make it much, much finer than, uh, than 90 degrees, uh, you'll, you'll spend a lot more time thinking. Um, in, if we set it to 15 degrees and give it some extra think time, and we'll probably drop this down to just mid and do pack all, and we'll see if it gets anything better. And you can see here by the timer, it's going to be at least two minutes thinking time unless it suddenly finds a better solution. And I don't think it's going to. When you don't see it adjusting the shells and testing new positions after several seconds, you probably got the best solution you're going to get. So we'll let this run just a few more seconds. OK, I'm going to press space to stop that. And we're back to 58.9. So that's about the best we're going to get. Another thing to consider with uh, your UV packing is the textures that you actually want to apply. Now, this being a castle is obviously going to be probably like stone or brick or something like that. And if you start rotating things around and you end up with your shells at very odd angles, that could be a little difficult to texture. So it really depends on what you're trying to do. Um, if we were unwrapping, say, um, a wooden model, and we had a wood grain texture that we wanted to apply, you'd probably want your shells to be facing in the same direction. So you can see each of these towers, for example, 
is is completely perpendicular on these edges here and so any sort of a grain pattern or something like that would would be nicely lined up across all of these shells and so that can make your texturing a whole lot simpler but i think we're pretty much good here we're not going to get any better than this but again with more complicated models it will take longer to think uh, it will consider more packing options and if you use the rotate feature you can probably find even more efficient ways to pack these models. Uh, that's it for this video. I may make another video where we actually look at a couple more advanced features, maybe take another shot at rotate with a different model, and uh, we'll look at things like the boxes, which can be a, a useful feature depending on how you, meticulous you want to be with your layouts. Uh, boxes can be quite useful. Um, I've intentionally left them off in this case. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it, and, and I hope you learned something a little bit more valuable about using UV layout. Thanks a lot.